Recording this program is entirely fictional and made by a sole Canadian man. All characters and events in the show, including the host, even those that are based on real people, are entirely fictional. The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. America. The land of opportunity. Fueled by immigration and innovation, with just a touch of authoritarian despotism. Here in these glorious United States, there exists a vast criminal underground stretching from sea to shining sea. And if you look closely at our utopian American settlements, you may just find the stain of criminal activity in more places than you ever thought possible. Tonight, on Grand Theft Auto Geographies. Dirty deals, promiscuous activity, and heavy crime. Tonight we will be examining a district of Liberty City where rules are optional. A neighborhood so heavily polluted by crime and corruption that even most police officers avoid it like an awkward acquaintance. So notorious is the seedy atmosphere of this area that even its name directly evokes the illicit nature of its daily dealings, barely hidden from the public eye. The Red Light District. Picture a dingy, crime-ridden, and debaucherous neighborhood. The Red Light District of Liberty City circa 2000 was one such place, and populating its narrow, claustrophobic streets were a variety of illicit establishments, crumbling residential infrastructure, and occasional views of the better parts of town, obstructed by Portland Island's distinct elevated rail network. Like many neighborhoods in Liberty City around this time, the district is quite small and is heavily populated by businesses directly or indirectly linked to some form of criminal activity, often of the organized variety. Pimps, pushers, prostitutes, and all other manner of Elsie's underground roam the streets of red light near day and night, though their activity is known to increase when the sun goes down. While most of the area is known primarily for its unsavory individuals and businesses, the western and eastern edges of the district are distinctly more calm and typical with the western half of Red Light looking out over the river towards Staunton Island, and mostly consisting of low-cost, high-density residential buildings. And the eastern edge bordering the St. Mark's District, consisting of several large buildings, mostly a mix of residential and commercial plots. A central road runs along the district, going north into Hepburn Heights and ending south in front of the Meowch Sex Kitten Club. This most prominent road contains the area's most iconic landmarks, such as Luigi's Sex Club 7, formerly Polly's Review Bar, and infamous criminal fixer company Pay and Spray, with several smaller streets branching off of this primary stretch with smaller commercial plots. Four other main roads run through the district, an avenue along the western riverfront, an avenue on the eastern edge bordering several other districts, a second central road that runs perpendicular to the first and adjoins the two avenues, and another long road containing few businesses and primarily serving as a connection to Hepburn Heights, which the district borders to the north, with St. Mark's to the east, Chinatown to the south, and the riverfront to the west. The full and detailed history of Liberty City is difficult to ascertain. Due to numerous incompetent bureaucrats and meddling politicians throughout the years, we can only start to piece together indisputable facts about the city and its neighborhoods starting in the late 1990s. In the mid-90s, the district was under the control of the Sindaco Mafia family, and likely had been for many years prior. By 1998, during the rise of the Leone family, due in large part to the actions of the future capo regime Tony Cipriani, the district would see a full-scale gang war between the Leone and Sindaco families, with open gunfire being exchanged by Mafia soldiers in the streets of Red Light on several occasions. The war escalated to such heights that a building, the Sindaco-controlled Doll's House, Brothel and Gambling Den, was bombed and destroyed, further adding to the chaos the district had become known for. Following the Sindaco family eradication during the Mafia Wars of 98, the district would fall squarely under the control of the Leone family, with its most prominent attraction, the famous Polly's Review Bar, becoming the also famous Luigi's Sex Club 7, providing services to Liberty City's most unsavory customers ever since. In 2000, the district would again become a safe haven for criminal duo Mike and Vinny, who operated out of red light for presumably the Leone family. 
Following Vinny's supposed death, Mike would also begin working for a man known as Johnny the Bartender, for whom Mike bombed and destroyed an upstart bar in the district, the Diamond Sky. By 2001, the district, still under the control of the Leones, would see more notoriety and violence when escaped bank robber Claude took safe haven in the area with Leone associate 8-Ball, before later being betrayed and raining further chaos down on the neighborhood when Claude assassinated Salvatore Leone as he was leaving Luigi's club. Since the downfall of Salvatore, it is unknown if the Leones remained in control of the territory, though it's suspected that they did, under presumably new leadership. Many businesses line the streets of red light, and many of them represent some of the more fringe and dangerous elements of American life. The businesses in the district circa 2001 are $10 Steps Ammunition Big Al's Liquor Cafe Metropolitan Capitale Cheap Thrills Citibank Classic Nails Dry Cleaning Eddie's Executive Relief Fellows Fluffy Pillows Freeman Coated Fabric Corporation Handpen, Luigi's Sex Club 7, Meowch Sex Kitten Club, Oily Johnny's Massage Parlor, Pay and Spray, Peepland, Roadway Foods, The Rush Construction Company, Semtex Electronics, Tattoos and Body Piercings, Short Stay Hotel, The Body Shop, The Bowler's Fist, The Glenwood Drugstore, Woody's Topless Bar, Triple X Mags, Video Video, and Yo Ma's Frozen Fishy Finger Factory. Okay, now for this section I have no choice but to temporarily drop the kayfabe. I am not a worldly man, at least not yet, so please take this information with a grain of salt. According to the wonderful GTA wikis, the red light district of the 3D era Liberty City is based on primarily the block of Baltimore during the 1970s, and parts of 42nd Street in New York, particularly at 42nd and Broadway during the 70s, when Times Square was a seedy and dark and often dangerous part of town, filled with porn shops and stalls and brothels, among other marginalized elements of American society considered dirty. Now looking at parts of Baltimore especially, you could definitely see the influence, and despite the GTA equivalent of Times Square being on Staunton Island and not on Portland, you can definitely see the influence of 42nd and Broadway as well. Especially in places like Luigi's, with their overhanging, bombastic, and in-your-face neon signage. Now just like the game version, these neighborhoods were mostly mixed zoning, with commercial businesses lining the streets and residential apartments above them. And while GTA 3 isn't set in the 70s, the aesthetic of that era was very evidently carried over from the past, as both the block and 42nd and Broadway had gentrified and eliminated many elements of the so-called unsavory businesses over the course of the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. If you enjoyed this video, consider checking out my other main series, GTA Biographies, where I examine in-depth characters from the GTA universe from an in-universe perspective in long-format episodes. All of my videos take quite a lot of work to produce, so if you enjoy my work, please consider dropping a like, leaving a comment, or sharing the video. It helps a lot more than you might think. If you want to contribute to the channel directly, and get some extra goodies in the process, consider joining my Patreon, where you can get access to all the music used in my videos, early access to episodes, and a credit in all future episodes for helping me to keep this channel running. Thank you for watching. I'm Guinness Walker, and I'll see you next time on GTA Geographies.